So, in the last talk in this room, in the previous talk, we have seen the server team of Canonical. And I'm also working at Canonical, and I'm in the desktop team. And my work is to make printing just work. I'm the leader of, of the open printing project. This is an, an independent organization. It's independent of Canonical. And what I'm doing in open printing, everyone is using, not only Ubuntu. And so I'm the printing guru for free software in general, therefore. But I'm also integrating the printing stuff in Ubuntu. And as we have seen in the previous talk, I'm therefore also very much involved in Debian. I'm not a Debian developer, Debian maintainer, so I'm working together with the Debian maintainer, Torsten Alterholz. And so Torsten and me are trying to keep the delta in the, uh, in the printing stuff low. It's main, it mainly works, but there are, for example, things like with the universe and the main, which does not exist in, in, in Debian, and also the policies, uh, whether one can use uh, uh, for, for packaging and so on, that there are some deltas, unfortunately, left. Also with the snap support and cups and so on. And now I will talk I will talk about the new architecture of printing. So, and, and at first I will introduce into the new architecture, then I will talk about the desktop integration. I'm in the desktop team at Canonical, and also printing, you know, usually you send a job to the printer from any desktop application, in most cases. So it's very important for, for us at Open Printing that we take care of the desktop and if we change anything in our architecture and workflows, that we take care that the desktop applications are take, getting note of it and get adapted so that they, that they continue to just work with printing. And so I'm talking about printer setup tools and print dialogues, the two essential components where printing interacts with the desktop, and also about how, how we should integrate the new architecture in Debian. So, the new arch at, at first I will talk about the new architecture, and, and, and what, what we have is that mid-2000, Cuts 1, 1.0 was, uh, was released, and from that then on, by integrating it in Mandroid Linux, and I, I, I did the kickoff to make it the standard for all distributions. And since that time, since it was created, Cups works more or less the same way for all the 20, 20, two years, 23 years now. And Postscript was a standard job format. In that times, in the late 90s, when we had the, had the beginning of Linux and when we had several commercial Unixes, in the POSIX style operating systems, as they, are, as they come from the universities, from the com computing centers, where printers were usually big uh, Postscript lasers, there are Therefore, PostScript was the standard for printing graphical uh, lay or layout text content. And, and, uh, and, we, and so the capabilities of a printer were described in, and the capabilities of a printer, of a PostScript printer, are described in a PPD file, PostScript printer description, and these PPD files are provided by the manufacturers of the PostScript printers and are usually somewhere in the Windows driver package. And the PPD, and the PPD describes all user settable options like trays or resolutions or paper sizes. 
quality color and so in a static text file. So it's also human readable and human editable without needing to compile it or so. And now CUPS made use of this and so easily support all PostScript printers to their full extent. And therefore I had ad adopted CUPS in, uh, in as a system administrator in the physics department there back in 2000. And with this everything has started. And so to end CUPS naturally supported also right from the beginning on the non postscript printers and here the author, Michael Sweet, the author of CUPS, has extended the PPD format by adding a line to it telling about a driver filter, a filter which contains a known format like PostScript or CUPS raster into the printer's, uh, printer specific format and this was the concept of printer drivers in CUPS. And therefore, we need for every printer a PPD file, and for the non postscript filters, for the non postscript printers, in addition, a filter executable, a driver filter. And these driver filters, they usually use Ghost script to convert postscript. The CUPS filters use Ghost script to convert postscript in, in any other format, especially into raster format. For example, the, the universal CUPS raster, which got introduced with CUPS. And, you, and for getting a print queue for a certain, for a given printer, you usually manually created the queue and assigned a PPD file to a printer. And with this information, CUPS and, and applications knew that there's a print destination and how to handle it that the incoming postscript is turned into the printer's native format. And so now the, the, uh, the central point of the new architecture is that we, got get, we want to get rid of PPD files. Because PPD files are something very old. In 1984, Adobe stopped the development on PPD for, on the PPD format, and so this was all. So PPDs were already obsolete when CUPS was born. And in 2006, when I uh, organized the first Open Printing Summit, Michael Sweet and me, we abolished PostScript as the standard print job format and replaced it by PDF to have the modern format which on the internet is used for printable files, for distributing printable files. And it's much more reliable. It's also much more secure because PostScript is a full-fledged full programming language, so allows to write malware with it. And PDF is a, graphic, uh, is a vector graphic, a graphics uh, format and not a programming language. And PPD files, they can nice, yes, and another thing is PPD files can principally represent user-settable options, but they are very, a lot restricted, as PPD files can only uh, represent uh, evaluate, uh, 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 enumerated choice options. You can choose one paper size, you can choose one tray, and so on or Boolean. You can turn on color printing and you can turn off color printing, for example. But it cannot, for example, use numerical options, for example, for the brightness or for the contrast, or it cannot use uh, string options, for example, for a fax number or for a password. So we get, we, so we all the time wanted to get rid of PPDs. Michael Sweet has deprecated de de once 10 years ago, but we had no idea yet how to replace them. So we were going on with them and, until, until a few years ago. In two th in, and, and now let us see how the new architecture looks like. We have a PPD, we, want, we get a PPD-less cups. 
So the cups will be get, will getting all IPP. IPP is the Internet Printing Protocol. Cups use the Internet Printing Protocol right from the beginning on. And the Internet Printing Protocol was developed a lot in the time. And, and since something like 10 years or so, or so with its version 2.x, it supported driverless printing, which means that an IPP printer can tell everything about itself, all the capabilities, so that on the computer side, side no PPD is needed anymore, and it uses standard protocol, like PDF or some raster format. And so, so with these printers, we, we actually do not need PPD files anymore. And as the printers currently on the market, also the cheapo, the, the cheapo printers which you buy in your grocery store, they are all driverless IPP printers. And so for most users, we do not need printer drivers and PPDs anymore. The current cups already supports driverless IPP. And so we can go forward and can get, get rid of PPD files. CUPS 3.x will not support PPD files anymore. And in one year from now, it is supposed to be completely released. And we, can, we have also another situation already. We have a snap of CUPS in the snap store. And this snap of CUPS as it is, as the file system of these cups is in a capsule, it's an emul it's a sandbox packaging, Snap is a sandbox packaging, so the file system is immutable, one cannot add PPD files and driver filters to it, so the cup Snap behaves similarly, we have to, we have to live without classic cups drivers using PPDs and driver filters. And so we are in the realm of the new architecture without PPDs. So CUPS 3.x or the CUPS snap by itself support only driverless IPP printers. As I mentioned, the current modern ones which you buy everywhere. No, and so and CUPS 3.x will not support even more manually creating queues. The current CUPS you can manually create queues, but for driverless printers, you don't need it. And the IPP printers, if they are present and CUPS detects them, they are automatically available as print de destinations without needing to configure something in CUPS. And so the CUPS 3.x, which does not actually support PPDs anymore, only needs filtering for the driverless standard formats, PDF, PWG raster, Apple raster, and PCLM. And one does not need to add printers, uh, add filters for individual printers which you add to the system. So it works with a, co with a, a defined complete filter set and you don't need to add any other filters. So this is also ideal for sandbox packaging and immutable distros. And one remark, PCLM has nothing to do with hard HP's PCL. PCLM is a reduced PDF, which is raster only. It's a format which is created for cheaper pointers, which are not powerful enough to be PDF pointers. And for legacy and specialty pointers, Yes, legacy printers, all the old printers which needed a driver before, they do not get a driverless by themselves. And some specialty printers where the manufacturer says, we, we, we cannot put into the printer the, lo lo the logics, or do not want to put into the printer the logics for being an IP, IPP uh, driverless printer. For them, we, we use so-called printer applications. A printer application is an emulation of a driverless IPP printer. So for, for, the, for the computer end, it appears as a driverless IPP network printer. And on the other end, it communicates with the actual printer. And inside the printer application is the software which does the conversion to the printer's native format. So here we see uh, a diagram 
of the difference between old and new. The current CUPS architecture with CUPS 2.x, you have the user applications which uh, pull the list of, of uh, print destinations and send drops to the CUPS daemon, which is the blue uh, uh, square. And if the printer has driverless, IPP everywhere is, uh, is one of the flavors of driverless IPP printing. And if the printer has driverless, CUPS copes directly with it without any additional software or data. And, and so uh, and one does not even need to create a print queue, so it works already like in the new architecture. But the CUPS 2.x for, for, uh, for uh, non-driverless printers, you see, it can work like in the new architecture because it supports already driverless printers, so it can also use printer applications as printer drivers, but it still can go the old way, like all the 23 years, installing manually a CUPS queue with a PPD file and a driver filter, and this way uh, support the non-driverless printers. And when we go to the new CUPS architecture, so we have on the, on the other side CUPS 3 or the CUPS snap, then the CUPS daemon can only cope with IPP point destination, with the driverless IPP pointers, either with, with native driverless IPP pointers, which do it by the hardware, or for the legacy pointers which need a driver using printer applications. So this nicely works when we use command line applications, when we are on a server, on a headless server, which prints something. But now we get to the desktop. On the desktop, we have two components where the desktop in, uh, applications and the desktop environment are interacting with the printing system. You know probably the most important, the print dialog. Each application has somehow a print dialog so that you can tell the application to print and on which printer and with which settings. And another thing is the printer setup tool. This is to configure printers because not all printers appear automatically. And some appear automatically is there's also a, a fully automatic uh, interfaceless printer setup tool working in the background. And here, what are printer setup tools? We have the CUPS web admin ad interface. If you go to this log low 631 with a browser, it connects to the CUPS daemon. And then the, the, you see the printer setup tool, which is built into the CUPS daemon. Then you have CUPS command line tools, LPI admin, LP info, LP start, to, uh, to set up printers and configure them. You have GUI tools. Most, most, uh, in most, uh, in practically any uh, desktop environment, you can use system config printer. And system config printer has even a user daemon which automatically sets up uh, USB printers for fully non-interactively. This is one of the hidden interfaceless printer setup tools, but System Config Printer itself has, an, has a user interface to also manually set up printers. You have the GNOME Control Center, there you have a printers module inside, and also the KDE settings, there's also a printers module inside, and you have the CUPS BrowseD, which is a daemon, which automatically sets up network printers in the background. It's also a printer setup tool, but also an interfaceless one. And they all have one, something in common. They control CUPS, the one in CUPSD. They, they are able to list available printers and drivers and create print queues. They can list print queues and jobs. They can modify queues and they can also change server settings. For example, whether, whether you want to, want, want to have debug logging or whether only the owner should be allowed to, to, to delete jobs or whether everyone can delete 
everyone's job and so on. And so in the now, you know them from the old architecture. You had to, you have, a, you have set up a print queue with a printer setup tool, choosing one of the discovered printers and assigning a driver, PPT, PPD to them. And now the new architecture gets, and, and so the printer setup tool was listing your manual created cup skews. Now, in the new architecture, we have to go differently. The driverless IPP printers, imagine everything is a driver, every printer destination is a driverless IPP printer. They do not need cup for in cups a manual queue. They are automatically known to cups. So, so, in, so therefore, as print destinations, we can simply list all IPP print services instead of manually created cup skews. And, and cups fully automatically discovers them, so you do not need to configure anything in cups which print destinations. Undois Tres, Undois Tres, Undois Tres. Again, try it again. Undois Tres, Undois Tres. So, we have, so we have the point destinations which we want to list in the printer setup tools are the IPP print destinations, the IPP print services, and not manual cup skews anymore. And now, for, a man, for what, what can we do with an IPP print destination? For a manual cup skew, we had the possibilities we could delete the queue, we could set the, the, we could set the default option settings, and we could, uh, yes, and yes, this we could do more or less. And we could also change the driver. We could, we, we could replace the current PPD file by another one. This all does not make sense for IPP print destinations. So the print, printer setup tool should not list these tasks in the menu, which you get when you click on, a, on the listing of print destinations, but instead, each IPP print service has a web interface, a web admin interface. You know your printer has a web admin interface, and printer applications also have a web, a web, uh, a web admin interface. So instead, each print destination gets a button where you click on it, and then the web interface is opened. So then even users who are not aware that every print destination has a web interface get aware of it, will by clicking see it, and know that they have to configure there, not in cups anymore. And another thing is, the printer setup tool has an add printer functionality. In the old case, it has, it had uh, the, the, the situation, you chose a discovered printer, uh, assigned a PPD file to it and got a manually created print queue, but now it's different for the new architecture. In the, in the new architecture, to add a printer, you only add non-driverless printers. The driverless printers are automatically there. And for the non-driverless printer, so a non-driverless printer discovered, like in the classic case, but there's no IPP print destination for it, so then it gets listed in the add printer part, and when you add the printer, we search a printer application for it, and when we find a printer application for it, either locally installed or downloaded uh, from the internet, we create a print queue for the printer in the printer application, 
And so this way, the pointer appears at the driverless IPP destination. The pointer application appears then as a driverless IPP destination to print on that pointer. So we have similarities in the printer setup tools. In the main window, the old one, we list cup skews and have buttons and, uh, and pop-ups to, to modify the queues. In the new architecture, we list IPP destinations. And we have buttons to, to, uh, to open the web interface. And also the IPP system service, this is also in a way to talk IPP to the printer to configure the printer. And in the, in the add printer part of the printer setup tool, before we listed printer devices and we listed drivers to assign to the devices. In the new, we list non-driverless printer devices and we find printer applications to assign to these devices. And this means all the printer setup tools we have, they are obsolete and need to, to be worked on so that they get ready for, uh, for the new architecture for CUPS 3.x in case of a Debian, it's only CUPS 3.x. I, I assume that in Debian it will never happen that a snap will be used by default. So it will be CUPS 3.x, which is the actual switch over. And so, so in the GNOME control center, it is deeply under, uh, uh, under construction to switch over into the new architecture. My Google Summer of Code student, Mohit Verma, is working on it. Already last year's Google Summer of Code and now this year's Google Summer of Code, and he will finish this year. And we will do one special thing. We will not remove the old functionality and replace it by the new functionality. We will have both functionality at once in the printer setup tool, so that we, do, we can switch over to the new GNOME control center wherever we want before CUPS 3.x appears. We do not have a hard switch, so that we have to switch GNOME control center and CUPS at the same time. So, and as CUPS 2.x handles driverless printers already in the new architecture, not needing queues, the switch over of the printer setup tool will facilitate the handling of driverless printers already with CUPS 2.x. So the main view will show both IPP destinations and a, a manually created CUPS queues. And if there's some relationship between a manual, a manual CUPS queue and an IPP destination, for example, if it's the same physical printers, they are listed as a group. Also, if you have a printer application and you, you have assigned more than one driverless printer to it, they are also shown as a group. And in the add printer dialog, you, you will, uh, for a non-driverless printer, we will search both classic drivers and printer applications. But when we find a printer application, we prefer it so that we have a smoother transition to CUPS 3.x later. So, so the upstream needs, we are, with the GNOME control center, we are uh, nearly finished. And what we really need is that someone fixes the KDE settings, that the printer setup tool there is also updated to the new architecture. And another thing is we have many desktop environments which are not GNOME or KDE, like Budgie, for example, or, or Unity. And they often use System Config Printer as their printer setup tool. And System Config Printer is, due to lack of interest by Red Hat, it comes from Red Hat, is hosted by, on Open Printing currently. Due to lack of interest by Red Hat, as they use GNOME with GNOME Control Center, is not developed anymore. It's discontinued. It's in maintenance mode. And we need 
to revive this development so that we can uh, so that we can uh, uh, serve for these distros for these for these desktop environments which are using system config printer so the system config printer works also under the new architecture. And another thing is the changes, Mohit's changes on the current GNOME control center. We will probably also need to backport to, to the GNOME 3, so that because some, some desktop environments like Unity, they use, uh, they use uh, uh, GNOME 3 libraries for this part. So they used the GNOME control center of, of GNOME 3. And another, another approach is even to take the GNOME control center and to build it only, to build only its printers module and to skip all the other modules to make a printer setup tool out of it. So with this, now you know what is the work of the printer setup tools to be able to switch over to, to three, uh, CUPS 3.x. Another point for the new architecture is the print dialogues. The print dialogues, the current ones, have many problems concerning the new architecture. The only print dialogue with, which actually works with it correctly is the GTK print dialogue. All the others have some problems. The most common problem is that, that they use stone old CUPS APIs, so they are not supporting the temporary queues which CUPS creates when CUPS accesses a um, uh, driverless IPP printer. So you don't see the driverless IPP printers in this print dialog. The only thing why you see, probably see them in all print dialogs is CUPS BrowseD, which sees where CUPS would create a temporary queue, and in, in that place it creates a manual permanent queue as a workaround so that all print dialogues work. And this workaround, which I have introduced several years ago, I want to get rid of finally. And the workaround will not work with CUPS 3.x anymore. And so, the print dialogues need to cope with uh, temporary queues with, uh, with uh, IPP uh, driverless printers by themselves. And to do so, they have to use the current print dialog. They, no, no, they have to use the current, a, the current LibCups API. They cannot use the old API anymore, which is, is in LibCups. They have to switch to the current uh, LibCups API. So, and when they use that API, the print dialog by itself lists also the virtual printers of CUPS, lists the driverless printers for which in CUPS there's no manually created print queue. And the GTK dialog has this fixed already. But there are many applications which have older versions of G GTK print dialogs. And so there, the driverless printers do not appear. And also, CUP, as CUPS 3.x, CUPS 3.x will also not, not, not use PPD files at all. It will not, for the, CUPS 2.x for the driverless printers creates internally automatically a PPD file for the work to handle the virtual queue. CUPS 3.x will not do it anymore because it gen generally does not support PPD files anymore. But there are also some print dialog, like in the web browsers, which access really actually slash etc, slash CUPS, slash PPD, the PPD files in there. This is totally wrong. This they should not do in under no circumstances. Not only that, they are, that these PPD files are not available anymore in, in uh, CUPS 3.x, also that we get more and more immutable distros with sandbox packaging where the application has no access to the systems file system or to the file system of the print environment 
And so even if we have still cups 2.x, the application has no access to the slash etc slash cups slash bpd. And so everything has to use the current APIs of, of libcups. A anything else will does not work and will not work soon. And so one thing is we see CUPS makes a change. CUPS has also made changes earlier. Is the automatic, is the vir virtual queues, the automatic uh, acceptance of uh, driverless IPP pointers without manually creating a queue. This already exists for several years. But the people who made the desktop environment or the applications with the print dialogues, they did not follow. They continued to use the old, uh, old APIs. And so I was forced to, uh, to, to have Cups Browse D as a workaround. And, so, and now we are in the, in the next step. We need to change the, the GUI, the desktop again for the new architecture, for, for the point where PPDs will go, or, or go away altogether. And so there's a lot of that, or a lot of applications, desktop environment, a lot of inertia, and the, as they do not quickly change to the, to the changes in CUPS itself, in the printing stack itself, in time, we are forced to use ugly workarounds and to avoid, avoid this, I, am, I want to take away the responsibility of the GUI folks on the, print, uh, on, on the cups and printing stuff by introducing a new interface so that the, the, the uh, communication with the actual print technology is done with the module maintained by the maintainer of the print technology and the maintainer of the graphical user interface and application do not need to cope with the print technologies again. This also helps to introduce new print technologies like if someone wants to create a network a cloud printing service, he could drop simply a module in the Snap Store and by installing it the cloud queues will appear in, in, in the user's uh, print dialogues. And this mechanism is the so this mechanism we use, this design which I have created for this is the so-called common print dialog backends. You have the print dialog, which is a front end, and you have backends which are independent of the desktop environment. They are completely GUI neutral and co connected by DBus, and each backend is for one print technology. There's a CUPS backend currently, and there's a print to file backend currently, and one can easily create backends, for example, for a cloud printing service. And these backends are maintained by the maintainer of the print te technology. So the CUPS backend is maintained by open printing. And this way, when CUPS changes, we change also the backend. And so every change in CUPS works with all the desktops. Yes, yes. We are near, near the end now. So we have to do this in the print dialogs. In the GTK dialog, it's done by a Google Summer of Code student. And in the QT dialog, it's nearly done. And for the other dialogs of LibreOffice, uh, uh, Chromium, Firefox, uh, Mozilla, Thunderbird, there's a student currently working on it. And, yes, yes, here's a link. So, And if all the print dialogs have common print dialog backend support, then we have no problems anymore 
that, uh, that with a new architecture. As the common printer, the, as the CUPS backend, is already ready for the new architecture. It, it uses exclusively the new APIs of the CUPS library. And now, in Debian, for the new architecture, based only on Debian packages, we need the following. We need a libcups, but the libcups 3 of cups 3.x. This libcups does not support PPDs anymore, but has other useful uh, APIs for other stuff, like OAuth and so. We need a cups local server. We have two types of cups servers in cups 3.x. A cups local server, it, this one is a user, is a, a user daemon, a session daemon, which only supports printing on local printers. And it can even use, instead of the normal localhost 631 or the domain socket, it can also alternatively use the Debian interface for accessing the printers. And if we want to share printers, we, add, we have to optionally install the CUPS sharing server. This is a system daemon which opens localhost 631 to to share printers out so that other computers can use them, so that we have a print server. And what is not needed anymore is the CUPS filters, the driver filters, which we have used in CUPS 2.x. In the CUPS browse D, it does not work anymore with, the, with CUPS 3.x. As CUPS browse D was creating manual queues automatically, and manual queues are not supported by the CUPS local server, Still needed is GoScript or Poplar to, uh, to turn PDF or PostScript into a raster format. But this will be later on replaced by Mike Sweet's PDF.io because Mike does not like the others due to being C++ or having the wrong license. And so we also, we have no classic drivers, so we will not install the printer drivers something packages anymore. But instead we will install printer applications. We have, so we have to install the printer application library, which is used by all printer applications. We have to install, uh, and if we have printer applications which retrofit all drivers, so this means a printer application which uses internally PPDs and driver, uh, and driver filters. We use the Puppet Retrofit library, the libcups filters library, and the libppd to support the legacy drivers. From these retrofitting printer applications, we have four, P PostScript, GoScript, Gutenprint, and HPLIP printer application. And these, these contain all the, around t the drivers for all the around 10,000 printer mod models which were supported with the current Debian. So we have no loss in printer, in printer support when we switch over into the new architecture. And what we have to take care of when we build these packages, we have to, we, once we cannot, grab, we cannot grab the printer applications from Ubuntu, as Ubuntu, provides the printer applications as snaps and not as Debian packages. And we, we have, uh, and the binary packages of these printer applications have to include the actual drivers. Yes, the other two, Puppel, Puppel Retrofit, but also LibCups filters and libppd, I have created Debian packages for, they are in Ubuntu, and so you from Debian could grab them from Ubuntu and use them in Debian. We are close to the end. So I think, yes, we have also a legacy printer application to support proprietary drivers. And so that's it. Are there any questions? So I have confused everyone totally now. No one wants to ask a question. Yes, yes. There is a question on IOC. Yes. And this one in this room also. Let's do the one in the room first. So, there, so please then come to me and okay. with them and tell with the microphone. 
what the question is. I've been using cups for many years, managing multiple types of printers. So one problem which I faced multiple times was like uh, the queue gets automatically pulsed and we have to implement rod. So basically rod driver, how it uh, overcomes this problem. Please go close. Please go closer to your mouth with a microphone so that Hello. I can hear you and our remote uh, attendees can hear you too. I think it's this. Now it is fine. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So uh, I have been facing a problem where I have to implement raw driver instead of any uh, generic printer driver or post script driver. So how does raw it overcomes this problem? I just like to understand. Ah, yes. You have also raw printers. Yes. Raw printers are also deprecated in the total IPP world. What Perhaps we have to solve this problem somehow with printer applications. But I'm not sure. Yes, yes, raw printers. How do we yes. solve this? There are I many think we have, I have to discuss this, it really with Michael Sweet. So perhaps you you uh, file a bug report on CUPS telling why you need raw print queues and explaining it well so that we can find a solution for this, for this problem. Okay. Yes, as there are really some cases where people use raw queues because, for example, they have a legacy application which directly, uh, directly produces HP's PCL language and then they put, want to print directly with this legacy application to an HP laser printer, which, which understands PCL. Naturally, one can, could use, go, also use Ghost PDL from the makers of Ghost Script, which understands PCL, but there are other situations which are not covered by Ghost PCL. And uh, one thing, uh, the web interface uses light HTTPD, which is a fork of Apache HTTPD for browsing. Uh, the, the web app. interface uses what? Light HTTPD. Live? Light HTTPD, light HTTPD, I see. The web, it is a fork of Apache HTTPD, basically, for managing the web interface. The web interface yeah. of, of CUPS. Yes, yes. It does not use anything than CUPS itself, no special libraries or so. Okay. So it is, and one thing is also to say, if we have the, the CUPS 3.x, the local server, it is, it's only uh, uh, providing, it's only, it's, it's not sharing printers, it's only, only making available the IPP print destinations. The local CUPS server will not have a web interface anymore. It's configurationless. And the sharing server will have a web interface so that you can, con can configure which printers you want to share and which not. Okay, till we are out of time, so can we do one quick question on IRC? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, um, AXHN is asking, what's the plan for Debian 13? Both CUPS 2 and CUPS 3 or CUPS 3 only? Yes, we have a long, we have a lot of time. We have, we have started the cycle for the next Debian distribution. And as fast as I know, the cycle is more or less two years, not half a year as in Ubuntu. And so it's like the LTS is more or less. And, and for this, we have plenty of time to go CUPS 3.x. When we are releasing CUPS 3.x in the end of 2024, and we expect somewhere in 2025 the Debian, uh, the next Debian release, I assume, but I'm not a Debian developer, I assume that that Debian release will use CUPS 3.x. Okay. And in Ubuntu, it will be the 25.04, which will be the first one with CUPS 3.x. All right, I think our time is up. Um, thank you so much, Sean, for an interesting talk. Thank you very much. And thanks for joining.